Dr. Dr. Indra Dwipa, and then the head of plant protection department, Professor Nofri Nelly, our distinguished lecturers this morning, Ibu Dr. Dewi Sardiami, and then Professor Fen Katesha, and all the participants of a webinar this morning. Well, the opening ceremony will be started by delivery of opening speech from Plant Protection Department. So uh, we give the time to Professor Nofri Nelly. Time will be yours, Ibu Prof. Nofri Nelly. Terima kasih. Thank you, Bu Ed. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, I'm proud to welcome and welcome all of you to uh, guest lecture today. We will discuss uh, a very interesting topic about the melibat. Uh, research on the melibat uh, in Indonesia by uh, Bu Dewi, Dr. Dewi Satyami, and biological control of melibat by Prof. Fenka from India. Uh, we know many bug are tiny, tiny insects uh, that cause a lot of damage to the several uh, type of plant. And so this guest lecture, we will gain in deep insight uh, about many bug. Uh, refer research has been conducted in Indonesia by Budewi, and the other things should be reset in the future. Uh, I hope we can discuss about the collaboration reset uh, with Budewi and Profenka from India. Uh, we, we make the collaboration reset about uh, mainly back uh, in uh, our department, uh, Department Plant Protection at uh, Andalas University. I hope Bu Dewi and Bu Ed can the, uh, make discuss about our collaboration yeah, in the future. Hopefully, I hope. Hopefully. Uh, yeah. Uh, then uh, we are honored to have an expert in this field, Bu Dewi, Professor Fenka, who has been uh, involved in this research and the study mealy bugs for a long time. They are in valuable resort for all of us, and we thank you for the taking the time to the here today. In uh, this guest lecture, we will explore various various aspect uh, about melibax. We will gain uh, a better understanding to the economic and environmentally impacts and of our population many bugs. Uh, so the research and knowledge we gain, we can take effective steps to control and manage many bug population in sustainable uh, environment friendly manner. Uh, I'm sure this lecture will we will profit value insight for all of us, but for the scientists, for the students, and other all of uh, present today. Uh, like, let's take this opportunity to listen and learn from the amazing skill uh, of Professor Fenka and Budewi. Thank you uh, to Budewi and Prof. Venka for the sharing his knowledge uh, with us. And thank you to the committee. Uh, quickly got the everything ready. Bu Lia, Bu Miss, Bu Mira, and who all participate uh, in this event. Thank you to the Dean for the support uh, and thank you to Bu Ip, uh, who agreed to the moderate, moderator today in uh, guest lecture. Hopefully, uh, 
this guest lecture will be success. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bu Yeah, thank you very much, Bu Nofri Nelly. Uh, hopefully that after the guest lectures, we hope that we can really uh, do the collaboration about yeah. the research. Yeah, yes. and we invite uh, Mr. Fenkarte Tesha to come to Indonesia, to our yes. camp. Yes, thank you. Okay, Nona. thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, mm -hmm. Professor Fenkatesha. Um, next speech, opening speech will be from the Dean of Agriculture, uh, Dr. Indra Dwipa. And at the same time, we hope that uh, the Dean will open our webinar. Uh, time will be yours, uh, Pak Indra Dwipa. Okay, thank you, Will Taryani. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. May the peace, mercy, and blessing of Allah be upon you. Good morning. The Honorable Head Plan Protesi Department, Prof. Dr. Nofrinelli. Our speaker today, Prof. Venkatesa from Bangalore University, India. To Devi Shatiami, PhD from ITB. University. The Honorable, our moderator today, Dr. Idrayani. Lecture, lecturers of Land Protection Department, lecturers and research from other university and institutions. Our plant protection student and all students we attend this event today. Respect this audience. Respect the guardian to their plan protesi uh, Department of Faculty of Agriculture Andalas University call an event guest lecture on this day. We invite our special guest from Bangalore University, India, Prof. Pekantesa, and from our country, Dewi Satriani, PhD from IPB University. Welcome to Andalas University from Fakem Tessa dan Bu Dewi Santiani PhD. On this lecture today, we will discuss about Malibor, or in Bahasa Indonesia, we call it Kutu Putih. Respect the audience, Malibor is paid that as a wheat distribution. It the word Malibor is just a name of group, a place on plan, we can see them. There is a wheat in color this bodies the way there are called Malibur, our Kutuputi. Malibur can be found in many cultivated plants such as chili, uh, cassava, bean apple, and many other. Generally, they said piercing sucking moth type in main they feed on plant by shocking plant liquids. The attack of this in more formation of plant part, but there is more dangerous of this malleable is also a gen of disease spread particularly the disease caused by virus. The example is pineapple malleable with HSC virus transmitted by Dionysius fever, a malleable in pineapple plant. Respect audience. To find out more about this space today, we have input our speaker, the expert at Melbourne, Chris Davies, Satyani PhD. She will present at Pen on Melbourne Research in Indonesia. The second, Prof. Vikantisa, he will present biology control of Melbourne global major shocking phase of growth. We hope the presentation of speaker today will be helpful in countering Melbourne in crop in West Sumatra. For our students, this event will also will help you to get you how to prefer rating of your taste of your thesis. Maybe some 
of you will be interested to of reset about my review. Respect audience. By Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, as lecture by Plant Protection Department of Faculty of Agriculture and Dallas University is official open. Often, mm. finally, is to speak when we wish all us all good as always. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much uh, for Dr. Indra Dwipa. We are done with that opening ceremony and then we proceed to the guest lectures. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, two lecturers invited uh, speakers today, Ibu Dewi Sartiami, PhD, and Professor Fen Katesa from Bungalow University, India. Uh, the two speakers, Ibu Dewi, will talk about advances on millibug research in Indonesia, and Professor Fen Katesa will talk about biological control of millibug, global major sucking pest of crops. Uh, well, uh, the first uh, time presentation we will give to Ibu Dr. Dewi Sartiami. Uh, then let's uh, take a look about the CV of Ibu Sartiami. Sartiami. Um, Ibu Dewi Sartiami uh, is a lecturer at Institute Pertanian Bogor. Then uh, she finished her Sarjana S1 from ITB Bandung in Department of Biology and then finished her master in 1999 from IPB in the field of entomology. And then for PhD, she graduated in 2018 from University Kebangsaan Malaysia in Department of Zoology. Okay. Well, uh, Bu Dewi Sartiami has uh, had many publication, and I think Bu Dewi now focus on millibugs, yeah, Bu Dewi. Yeah. Okay, uh, Bu Dewi, we would like to give the chance for Bu Dewi uh, around forty-five minutes, yeah, Duma. Okay, Budewi, you are pleased. Time and place will be yours. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Terima kasih, Ibu Dr. Hidrayati. Thank you very much. Yeah, welcome. Uh, okay. okay, may I start? Yes. Uh, my honor, uh, Dean of Faculty Agriculture University Andalas, Dr. Indra Dwipa. Very good morning. And then my honor, Professor Dr. Nofri Nelly, the head of Department Plant Protection in Faculty of Agriculture University of Andalas. Very good morning for you both. Assalamualaikum. And uh, to all participants here, I can I can see a lot of uh, college here. Uh, here's Dr. Afandi. Morning, Dr. Afandi. Ibu Sampurna Ginting, Ibu Siti Amina, Pak Hasmiadi, Pak Munsir, Pak Dahemi. Was thank you very much for coming to listening to the guest lecture uh, program yeah. of your department. Yeah, thank you very much. Curious, Bu Dewi. <laughs> yes, hopefully uh, we can uh, uh, share uh, uh, this uh, knowledge to all of you. And yeah. a very good morning to all students here that you have an opportunity to listen to the uh, topic of this morning about the mealybugs. 
Um, may I start my share screen? Okay, wait, wait. wait. Sure. About this? Yeah, clear, Bu Devi. Okay, thank you. Mm. Okay, uh, maybe uh, uh, moderator only give me, uh, not only, give me too much uh, time, oh. 45 minutes, maybe we will do in less than 45 <laughs> I think uh, it's better we can uh, more on discussion. Right, right. It depends on you, Bu Dewi. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bu Dewi. Yeah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I will start. Okay. Uh, everybody here, I would be uh, happy to, to give you an outline of my uh, lecture this morning about introduction, and the scary insect itself and uh, we will know how uh, to find the millibugs uh, with the very specific key characters of the of them and then we can uh, a little bit talking about uh, economic importance of this uh, pest and then uh, i do have already compiled compiling the a lot of uh, a lot of publication, uh, which is a uh, very uh, recently, so we can uh, uh, talk uh, more in uh, what we have done in Indonesia on the study of a uh, millibugs, and then uh, for the closing, I will give you some uh, point to further studies uh, where we where we can go to the right to the uh, left. So we can solve the problem of this pest. Okay, Dr. Fekantesa, I will start my first slide. Okay, I will I will start with uh, the cassava because uh, cassava in Indonesia is uh, maybe the second or the third commodity that it is important. Uh, not only the leaves that we can uh, use as vegetables, but we we do uh, for the root. Yes, the root uh, is very uh, important for us. And don't forget, Indonesia lie in the cassava belt. So we are tropical. So it's a very uh, soil yeah. environment is suitable for this to grow these uh, uh, crops. Uh, that's why the billy bugs now become uh, important to these crops. And not only uh, about crops, we can move to uh, another commodities, the horticulture. Here, a lot of photographs. I will take my uh, laser pointer. Okay. First here, the source of the Ananas comosus. In Indonesia, mostly the fruits are attacked by the mealybugs. And then this is a nice uh, fruit, dragon fruits. It is not escape from this pest. How about mangosteen? Yes, mangosteen too. Mangosteens is, uh, do have a very uh, specific uh, fruit. There is a calyx. Calyx in the upper side, so that's it is a good to mealy bugs to hide inside yeah. or beneath the calyx. Mm -hmm. And then here in the lower picture, this is a guava. guava yeah. So the mealy bugs will be happy to stay underneath of the leaves. Uh, this uh, papaya, of course because I will tell you that uh, in the next uh, slide that we have invaded by Paracoccus marginatus who came to Indonesia and invaded uh, most of uh, cassava, uh, sorry, the papaya plantation. Here, the banana still have problem with Dismicoccus neobrevipus. And then 
we can see the tiny pest here in uh, sawo kecil sawo sawo is um, sapodila yes sapodila manil karazabota so many of uh, fruits in indonesia has been recorded attacked by these mealybugs a lot of them including durians our durians if we can go to the when it is harvest durian harvest maybe in sumatra in uh, ibu syarah Wati, Ibu Nofria, Nefrineri, a lot of durian today. Uh, but it's fine. There is a lot of uh, uh, species of mealybugs. Will be different species uh, stay in uh, in the in the outer or in the carp of the uh, durian. How about ornamental plant? Yes, they are attacked too. So, so this uh, mealybugs happy to live in herbaceous plant like chrysanthemum. Maybe the picture is not good enough, but we can see there is a tiny here, the little tiny white insect coated with a mealy wax. Yes, here mealybugs. And what happened if the still the young plant of chrysanthemum? So the mal malformation of the, the leaves will be um, happened. We can see this is not a good form of the leaves. It is curly because of mealybugs. Here, there is one of uh, adult female here stay in the, in the stalk of the flower. Another families of plants. We can see there is a lot of uh, families of plants because the host is the range is very very wide. Palmae. This is palmae. We can see they are happy too to stay here, and of course they are protected by ants. This is very nice if we can go to the our backyard or we can uh, a little bit walk uh, in a lot of uh, palmae there is a lot of uh, mealybugs stay there i said stay there because maybe it is not make the palmae death uh, die but but it is for for the ornamental plant will be not mm, not good because the ants were there the sooty moat was there, so uh, will be a big problem for for uh, ibu ibu, for for us who who love uh, the ornamental plants. Next slide. Here, so what happened if if uh, the mealybugs stay in the in the leaves? They are happy to stay here. We can see. Here's the vein. This is the main vein. And then this is another vein. So they are sucking, they are suck the sap here, the phloem. So it is, it is uh, uh, what they are uh, doing is uh, for survive. So they want to stay there, to live there. And this is the behavior of them to suck their stylets go to the floor. Next slide. Okay, we will see how the systematics uh, works. The millibus belongs to Ordo Hemiptera, Subordo Stanorinca. The infra order is Cocomorpha, Superfamily Coxoidea, and then Family Pseudococcidae. So under Superfamily, Coxoidea, there is a lot of families here. Uh, maybe I only put uh, 20 families here. There is another more, should be another more. But this is the families is uh, the, we can recognize. So they are just, just near of us in, in there, in the outside of our home. The first is Dialspid, it's Diaspidi Day. Um, in Indonesia, we call it as kutu tempurung. 
no kutu perisai okay sorry it's kutu perisai this is our subject today pesedew coxide and this is another family coxide in bahasa we call it as kutu tempurung so what is different with with kutu perisai and kutu tempurung uh, kutu Tempurung or dial speech, we can separate between the exuvia, the the exuvia or, or the 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 cover body, and we can separate them. But for coccidae cannot, like a turtle cannot uh, separate uh, between uh, the the cover the cover with the body. So here a lot of uh, another families like caridae. We can find caridae with um, very a lot of like ink to to uh, to make a color. And uh, I will go to the next slide. Here, this picture show the live adult female. So the life, the life, uh, it is life means um, with the the wax still there yeah. still covered the body so we can see there is more wax in the posterior part of the abdomen this means uh, this adult already prepared to lay the eggs this one this call is office what happen if we put them on the serial step of chemicals to mountain to mounting the body we can see this kind so we have to put some chemicals in uh, to to keep to keep all the all the body content out and then uh, staining and then this is uh, the slight mounting so now we can identify after we make a slide preparation. Next. Okay. Back again. Okay. Okay. Here the picture of millibugs. What happened with this picture? Is it millibug? The answer is no. No. So we have to try to make a difference, different differences between millibugs and not millibug. This one is alerodids. We can see they do have uh, wings. Yes, this one is not millibug. Maybe this is margarodid. And then in the right side, this is the nymph of this picture. This is the adult here. It's called a family of Flatidae, and the nymphs do have the white wax. So we can uh, we can uh, we have to have to have to have uh, we have to to make a difference between them when we collect in the field. In the lower part. This one is not a millibug. This is a margarodid. This is Aesaria aegypta. This is not millibugs too. This is a um, uh, millibug with a, uh, maybe entoma pathogen. So the fungi already uh, grow. And this one, Please don't say this is a millibug. This is predator. This is the larvae of Coleoptera, belong to family Coccinellidae. So, if we go to the field, so we can now, using this a short guideline, we can say that this, we can make a difference between millibugs and others insect. See. This is still do have the white wax, but this is family ortre, orteziide. Yes, this is not pseudococcidae. So a lot of them will be uh, stay in the herb herbaceous plants 
in uh, many crops in the same way of pseudococci. Okay, now we will a uh, little bit talk about the economic importance. Since the mealybug set the plant on the floor, so there will be a very um, not not in a good way for plant to develop. And then, so the uh, mealybugs will excrete excrete sticky of a honeydew. And there is will be wax there, and it is uh, not good for the reduce the plant fruit quality. This for the direct damage, direct impact. For the non-direct impact, but more dim, but more harmful is as a virus. So one of them is um, here in uh, in pineapple. They call is is of uh, PMVE, PMWEV, Pineapple Millibug Associated Fires. So the millibugs, uh, one of the species is Dismicoccus um, neobrafipes, is a factor. So it's called, it could make uh, the plant dead and, and or, or reduce the production and so on and so on. So what is the case in Indonesia. Indonesia is rejected our mangosteen once, maybe uh, many years ago, but now it's already, already um, we can export our mangosteen to, to uh, other countries. But firstly, when we, when we export our mangosteen was rejected. Because what? Because contain ants. Ants, why ants there? Because ants symbiosis mutualism with uh, the mealybugs. So we have to be careful too with the ants. Okay, what what other cases of uh, the problem of this mealybug? The chrysanthemum, our chrysanthemum, we have to keep away from mealybugs because the mealybugs will will. Uh, make a lower quality of the chrysanthemum. So we cannot uh, send our, our chrysanthemum as uh, export matter to other countries. So this is the economic importance of the uh, millibags in Indonesia. Another thing, we have to keep an eye in quarantine aspect. This is a uh, very difficult when Phenacoccus manihotui came to Indonesia and then Phenacoccus salenopsis. But now these two species, since already in Java, Java, Java and uh, Sumatra, so it's called it is Opeteca E2. So we have to, to keep if we can uh, make a barrier or, or something or there is a policy these two species not distribute to another island. As you know, uh, Professor Fekatesa, Indonesia is uh, consists of islands. There is a lot of so our our uh, country is uh, islands. And here we call it as OPTKE one. We have to to make something uh, more because we hopefully not come to Indonesia. But as you know, before came to Indonesia, Phenacoccus manihoti or Phenacoccus aranopsis came to India first, <laughs> then move, move to the West and then go down to Indonesia. So this, I think if you have something in, in India, so please tell us we have to prepare ourselves, but hopefully, it is okay, but we cannot we cannot say you cannot come to my country. Cannot because they are moving without we are knowing the way we are. So we can only uh, could uh, do with uh, the policy. I think policy should be should be uh, applied to every every ministry. Okay, next. 
next we will talk about what happened in what not not what happened but uh, what we have done with with the study or research in uh, millibucks the firstly is about the viryati so everyone please see viryati ibu viryati is the first indonesian scientist who make a slides this is two of them the example of the, them the slide this slide is uh, very old so what i have been done with this slide i'm remounting so i'm open the the cover and give the millibus the specimen with a lot of uh, staining and then uh, covered again with uh, cover glass so in this paper there is a lot of lists a lot of lists of uh, uh, indonesian country records so this is a very uh, very start the millibucks in indonesia uh, <clears throat> lead by ibu wiriyati she is not uh, anymore with us she already or she already passed away next okay this is uh the first report of papaya so the papaya millibucks came to indonesia in 2000 2008 but maybe it's already uh already here for for long time because uh, i mean not long time maybe for months or year uh, because in that time in that time when munia pan came to indonesia and say Ah, there's a new invasive species came to your country. It's about maybe 2007, 2007 maybe, yes. So it's already explode, explode to uh, a lot of uh, papaya and we cannot eat papaya in that time because the all trees is gone. And then another invasive species came to indonesia in 2009 no actually it's 2000 2011 but uh, the paper i don't know why is 2009 okay the phenacoccus exactly came to indonesia along with uh, phenacoccus uh, solenopsis and these two papers these two papers will be uh, lead to another papers on the millibucks of indonesia and then pa agustin uh, already uh, mentioned there is a ferisia dasirili in indonesia uh, for the first time so with the calm time uh, continue we we continue to record more and more uh, species of millibugs. The next, again, Pak Agustin found Rastrococcus tropica sciaticus. This is for the first time. He report uh, it in uh, Bengkulu, I think. Yes, in Bengkulu. Bengkulu is in uh, Sumatra. So there's another uh, list again, what we uh, found in uh, more of literature of Pa Agustin and Ibu Sampurna about Rastrococcus. Yes, and they they try to, um, to count like this. So actually, if we can give more attention to the plan uh, around us, we can find a lot of something new. This happened in chrysanthemum. There is four species attack the uh, chrysanthemum. So you can see if this is the normal plant, this is already attack and the, the, the stem will bend, will curve. So it is uh, will be rejected if we will export this plant. So it's only maybe to sell in local market. 
Okay. After that, we recognize the dragon fruits that we will export to another country still containing some millibugs. So there is a reset there. There is another four species of millibugs. In this paper, they're uh, recorded in two places. No, no, three. Three places from Kalimantan, Java. Oh yeah, okay, Java. Java in two in two uh, province in the west uh, Java and the east Java. So there's a lot of uh, species here we have already uh, recorded, and <clears throat> one of the student already make a keys here to help to identify. Even it is still nymph because the current quarantine people, the quarantine officer need these keys to recognize, to tell, to declare that our, our dragon fruit is free from uh, millibugs target to other countries. <clears throat> Agustin, again. Uh, making a checklist for Indonesia scale insect, including, of course, uh, Pseudococcidae in this paper. <coughs> but, uh, Agustin again, uh, Millibug's complex of citrus. Uh, to everyone, I do have put here uh, the link so everyone can uh, download if you uh, receive this uh, material <coughs> slide. See, there is a lot of a lot of uh, millibugs associated with citrus. And how about Phenacoccus madihoti? Chile now is already arrived to Bali. Yes. Iwayan Supata, Professor Wayan already uh, reported this from Bali. And Planococcus bendovi, this is the first record again from Agustin Zarkarni. Okay, it is nice. Pa Agustin and his team find a new species and a new country record. It is nice because we never think that the millibugs will be stay or live in parasitic parasitic plant. See, this is, we can explore. We, we can find many things in our countries because we do have a lot of plants. Our diversity of plants is very high. So I believe there is will be another more and more millibus will be found. Okay, Pak Agustin, in bamboo. Yes, in bamboo, is it? No, 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 no. No, it's another new species. And three country records, not yet in bamboo. Wait, after this, maybe bamboo? Yes. See, this is the bamboo. This species is not covered by, uh, or actually covered by uh, wax, but the wax is very thin, uh, very thick. So, but the, the, the integument, the body of uh, the body of millibus is um, black, like this. Okay, in bamboo. See, bamboo is uh, in Indonesia, the, the yellow one is for ornamental plants. And this is the millibugs of Indonesia. Uh, belong to Pak Agustin again. Uh, Pak Agustin uh, wrote a book, but uh, still in press, I think. It is not yet uh, published, but already registered to a national library in, 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 in Jakarta. Yes. So we will wait for this book. Many information, of course, inside this book. We can uh, start uh, many new uh, research, new study 
and uh, we can hopefully because we are scientists we would like to solve the problem caused by this pest and for my last point we can still explore our countries with a lot of new species of mealybugs we do have we can go to the forest or maybe maybe something deep in near the root sometimes we miss that or we escape we, we didn't know it but the mealybugs is is in uh, in the root so another uh, the po uh, second point is study on important mealybugs of uh, commodities in our agriculture so if we can do uh, many research here not only in mango, mangosteen, or dragon fruits, or many other our uh, important commodities, we can help the farmers. We can do uh, share our knowledge to to our country to make a uh, more uh, production of these fruits. And three, we have to keep an eye of the invasive mealybug species, which surveillance program so if the surveillance we can go to the field and try to find many things we can keep record them and to to report to the uh, public or to the any 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 uh, any ministry that we want to to tell that we have to keep an eye of invasive mealybugs and four, we have to develop the biological control. Here, I do have a photograph of the cassava that uh, rear the rear cassava mealybugs here in the stack of uh, of cassava. So place in a cage, and then put uh, some uh, not some but anagirus lopezi and we have learned how to develop them in the cage. So after that, the mummies will be harvested and a lot of mummies we can release to the field. And last, we need to increase capability our country to export. So please do many research, many studies on uh, mealybugs, cows, uh, rejection of our commodities. If we can do that, then the increase of export will be uh, listed as a uh, income for devisa our countries. I think that's all. Uh, okay, this is uh, another one um, paper just just published on the parasitoid of cassava. So we can we can uh, do. Uh, rear the anagirus lopezi and, and uh, help the cassava not attack by this meriba. Thank you very much. So the times will be go again to our moderator. Okay, thank you very much, Bu Dewi. It was really good presentation with a very good language. It's easy to understand. Thank you, Bu Dewi. Um, I think we go to the next uh, lecture first before we do discussion. So, Bu Dewi, you are really on time to finish your presentation. Yeah, on the track. Okay. So we come to Professor Fenkatesha. Uh, we'll talk about uh, biological control of mealybug, global major sucking test of crops. About curriculum vitae, um, Mr. Fenkatesa got his PhD in 1984 from University of Missouri. Oh, 
and then master he got from university the same university in 1986 and then also phd uh, from university of missouri he got in 1990 in zoology especially entomology um then mr fen katesha is a professor at department of zoology bangalore university um area of interest in sex ecology biodiversity uh, behavior, biological control, and IPM. So many, the expertise of Mr. Uh, Fen Katesha. Um, well, of course, so many publications have been mapped, about 120 publications. Okay, um, we will give the time and the place for uh, Professor Van Katesha. Okay, thank you. Uh, Welcome. So, uh, what is the time uh, for me? Now it is eight. Uh, um, you will be given the time until 10.40. Okay. It is just like 40 minutes, sir. Okay, okay, it's all right. So, yeah. Mm, so, good morning to all of you. I good morning. thank all uh, the authorities of the Andlas University and also good morning to all participants. Uh, I will uh, start mm -hmm. my lecture straight away and then we can discuss later. Uh, what about my slide? Uh, whether I have to show my slide or you will be showing. You can share your own. Share? Shall yeah. I share mine? You can share, yeah. You can share your own slide. Okay. Lena, Lena. So host is uh, disabled to share the screen. Okay, you, you need help, bro? Yeah, or, uh, you can show my slide. Uh, okay. okay. Not, me. not yet from you. Yeah, no. because host, host is uh, disabled from your side. Okay, why? Vote me, you can help. Yeah. Jadi share screen ini banyak pula masalahnya. Ya. Yeah. Okay, you can go now. Yes, okay, thank you. Uh -huh. So, uh, so most of the aspects, uh, taxonomy and uh, different types of mealybugs are covered by uh, Dr. Devi now. So that I will uh, mostly concentrate on uh, the biological control aspect of mealybugs especially in India and the same thing uh, applicable to other countries also. Next slide, please. Yeah, uh, just as uh, mentioned uh, the earlier speaker, the mealybugs, you know, are very important uh, pests on uh, various crops. And of course, uh, sometimes some mealybugs 
pests are common on particular pests but in general they are polyphagous they can occur on various species of plants so all uh, plants are attacked by one or the other species of mealybugs so that's why there are uh, different spe uh, species of mealybugs attack uh, different uh, types of plants and uh, they become uh, very important when they attack the economically important crops otherwise uh, we will ignore them next slide please so among uh, numerous insect pests of plant about uh, 500 species of mealybugs were recorded on 246 families of plants throughout the world so mealybugs are very common throughout the world and especially they are very serious in uh, tropical uh, in tropical regions so when they attack the crops which are economically important then mealybugs are a serious pest so the severe infestation you know can result uh, several times 80% of defoliation and 100% of fruit drop so that's why uh, because they are very serious because they cause uh, severe damage next please so the mealybugs are uh, serious pests on uh, you know in worldwide they attack uh, coffee cocoa grapes papaya citrus guava mango mulberry sugarcane vegetables ornamental plants orchards they are important pests and many more plants and also they are on weeds so weeds are very common in uh, agricultural crops in the system so in any cultivation weeds are common so first you know the mealybugs will appear on weeds and then you know they uh, spread to the important crops next slide please so in india you know these are the very common uh, mealybugs pericia vergata of course it is known as a uh, tailed mealybug uh, it also occurs on coffee uh, sometimes it is serious on robusta coffee in india and then mechanella coccus hirsutus it is known as a uh, pink uh, hibiscus mealybug in india it is very common on uh, grapes uh, very common and then uh, you know the phenococcus uh, solenopsis uh, this this is known as cotton uh, mealybug uh, this is very common on cotton and uh, paracoccus uh, marginatus uh, just our speaker uh, you know mentioned about this on papaya maybe it is uh, you know spread from india to southeast asian countries uh, this is papaya mealybug and then we have another important is planococcus citri this planococcus citri is very common on uh, coffee especially in uh, in robusta coffee apart from that you know we have another one planococcus lilacinus that planococcus lilacinus is also very common in uh, coffee cultivation so these are uh, of course uh, maybe i told you about uh, 5000 species of mealybugs are there they are sucking pests so whenever you know they occur on an important crop they become a serious pest so there are several species of mealybugs uh, in uh, different countries they may be you know uh, uh, build up on a particular uh, uh, host plant and they become very serious next slide please so that's why mealybugs are uh, common uh, polyphagous pests they always attack you know any crops or any plants they first build up on a particular uh, weed even sometime and then you know they spread to main crops so they, they suck the sap of, of course uh, earlier speaker all uh, told about all this they suck the sap from the leaves uh, tender twigs nodes spikes flower buds fruits or even sometimes the roots so they in, in infest the roots and from there you know uh, when the weather uh, is suitable they will uh, you know appear on the plants so when the weather is not conducive they will be in the root system 
and when weather is uh, warm and humid uh, from uh, root system they will appear on the plants so adult mealybugs are small of course i need not to go in detail uh, about this already our speaker earlier speaker uh, mentioned about this and uh, they lay about uh, 100 to 1000 eggs uh, depending upon the species and the female attains maturity in about a month males are uh, short lived and do not feed only for reproduction and apart from that mealybugs reproduce parthenogenetically asexually so if uh, the host is copious and uh, uh, host plant availability is uh, more and weather is suitable then you know the mealybugs female mealybugs will uh, start reproducing asexually and then you know they build up their population Next slide, please. Okay, the very important uh, problem here with mealybug, they suck the sap and uh, debilitate the plants or weaken the plants. There may be a defoliation and uh, there may be a crop loss or uh, fruit drops, whatever it may be. But the ants are usually associated with mealybugs. The mealybugs, you know, secrete honeydew Ants are attracted to it because it's a very important food uh, for um, uh, ants. So because it has a uh, honeydew has the uh, sugar and carbohydrate, uh, they, that's why ants and mealybugs always have symbiotic association. Ants get honeydew as food from mealybugs, and they provide mealybugs sanitation so that they clean the you know, the honeydew so that their multiplication will be faster and then protect uh, from their natural enemies. So any natural enemies or biocontrol agents are trying to attack the mealybugs, ants will drive them away and ants protect the mealybugs from their enemies, maybe predators or parasites. And one more uh, problem here is uh, black fungi. So, the Capnodium species, you can see here, you can see here, this Capnodium fungus develop on honeydew secretion on the leaves and they form the sooty mold. This hinders the photosynthesis. So this is an indirect effect. The presence of ant also the indirect effect. The direct effect is sucking the sap and weakening the plants. So apart from that, some species of mealybugs are also vectors. They transmit plant pathogens. So that's why mealybugs are uh, very important that there is a direct uh, effect and also the indirect effect. Next slide, please. So the several ants are uh, associated. Of course, we made uh, studies on the association of ants, but uh, the cocktail ants, you know, the crematogaster species and red ants, ecophila, are very commonly associated in uh, Indian conditions. So, ants are uh, uh, very important in buildup of uh, mealybugs. Ants always aid the buildup of mealybug population because they give sanitation for the mealybugs by feeding on the honeydew. At the same time, they protect the mealybugs. Uh, from their natural enemies like uh, predators or uh, parasites. So, in the mealybug control, in the initial stage itself, the weed control is also very important in the field, agriculture field, and the second, the ant control. So, if you control the weeds in the initial stage and also ants in the initial stage, the mealybugs build up of population will be controlled in the later stage. So that's why uh, these things are very important in management of mealybugs. Next slide, please. So the mealybug uh, management. A satisfactory control of different species of mealybugs is not possible with insecticides because of their protective wax body coating and the ability to escape exposure inside bark crevices and other inaccessible parts of plants. So the many people advocate using the 
organic insecticides or toxic insecticides, especially now, you know, the organochlorine insecticides are used or sometimes uh, systemic insecticides are also used, but they are not highly effective because the, the toxic insecticides cannot establish contact with the mealybugs because of wax coating. And also, most of the time when we spray, the several mealybug species will be inside the crevices of the bark or uh, in the, you know, the fruit uh, nodes or in the root system or uh, below the leaves or sometimes inaccessible parts. For example, it is a, if it is a big tree, we cannot reach to all the parts of the branches and the spray. That's why the using, you know, the toxic insecticides are not uh, found very effective in the field. That's why the biological control of mealybugs using parasitoids and predators is the most important control method and uh, chemical control is less effective and uh, environmentally undesirable. When you use uh, toxic chemicals, uh, especially the organochlorine chemicals, so the, the control of the mealybugs is not satisfactory, maybe a very less control. At the same time, these uh, toxic insecticides will affect the natural enemies already there in the field so that they are also killed. That's why we should be very careful when you use uh, toxic insecticide, especially in the control of mealybugs, because you are not able to control the mealybugs using these toxic insecticides. At the same time, we are going to kill the natural enemies or environment friendly natural enemies existing in the, in the field. Next slide, please. So that's why, you know, because of these uh, shortcomings of uh, toxic insecticides, uh, non-effectiveness of the toxic insecticides on mealybugs, the indigenous and the exotic uh, enemies uh, of mealybugs are plays a very important role. So the several uh, parasites, the Hymenopteran parasites, even in India, we have recorded uh, uh, several important Hymenopteran parasites and also you know, several uh, coccinellid, ladybird beetles, they play a very important role in the control of mealybugs. So we depend on and, uh, uh, the indigenous natural enemies as well as, uh, you know, the exotic uh, enemies as a biological, biological control agents are very important in the management of mealybugs. Next slide, please. So in India, so the ladybird beetle, you know, the Cryptolemus montrosari, the coleoptera fox, important predator of mealybugs. It was uh, imported uh, from Australia and introduced uh, in India. So after the introduction of uh, uh, mealy, you know, the, this uh, predator in India, especially on uh, uh, Planococca citrus, citrus mealybug, the mealybug population is completely controlled. And not only that, this uh, predator is now, you know, existing in the field on their own. So once uh, it is uh, reared in the laboratory and then acclimatized to our Indian condition and released in the field, and uh, then, you know, now it is uh, multiplying in our field and they are very common. Next slide, please. So this uh, Cryptolemus montrosari predator was imported in 1898 from Australia and introduced to control the sucking pests, especially the mealybugs, the Planococcus citrae. And uh, this is a small beetle. Each beetle will lay about uh, 200 eggs. And uh, the grubs, and here in this case, the both the grubs and uh, adult, that is uh, beetle, will you know, feed on the mealybugs, all stages of mealybugs. So the life cycle is completed in about 40 days. And advantage with this uh, predator, the Cryptolemus montrosari, is you know, it feed on all stage of us, any species of mealybugs. So in some cases, 
some uh, species are species specific some predators and parasites but uh, this cryptolemus montrosari is uh, you know the polyphagus and it attack any species of mealybugs and it once it is acclimatized it can uh, multiply in the field and they can exist in the field and then uh, naturally they can control the mealybug population uh, earlier slide please earlier slide no no earlier slide earlier, yeah here you know you can see this is the larva uh, of the mealybugs you can see here this uh, uh, you know um, uh, the larva is uh, feeding on the mealybugs of course uh, it is uh, looks like mealybugs but they have filamentous it is uh, slightly bigger than the mealybugs so in this case the advantage both adults and larva of this predator feeds on any species of mealybugs and uh, help in the management of the mealybugs okay next slide please next so okay the another important uh, hymenopteran uh, inserted parasites lepto leptomastix dactylope so this was uh, imported uh, in 1983 from uh, trinidad and introduced in india to control the planococcus citri especially on coffee so the planococcus citri is a very important uh, pest of course it's a citrus mealybug uh, it also uh, you know infest the citrus plants all the citrus species apart from that the favorite host plants principal host plant is uh, robusta plant so the robusta coffee so it attacks the robusta coffee and uh, it causes a huge crop loss about 80 to 100 percent in some cases so that's why india you know imported these parasites in 1983 from trinidad and introduced in uh, india and uh, each female this is the endoparasite so the female will deposit egg into the uh, you know the mealybug and then the larva develop inside it's a solitary parasites one uh, parasite larva develops inside the mealybug and then it, they will be killed so they feed on the internal content and they kill the uh, you know uh, mealybugs so this uh, planococcus citri helped you know in india to control the planococcus citri uh, this uh, leptomastix dactylope helped to control the planococcus citri especially on uh, citrus plants as well as on coffee so the life span is about uh, 30 days but the one uh, limitation in this uh, with this parasite is this is species specific to planococcus citri like unlike uh, leptomastic uh, you know the cryptolemus montrosari predator it can feed on any you know the mealybugs but this parasite is a species specific to planococcus citri and uh, this attack only the planococcus citri so that's why this is the only limitation with this parasites but uh, uh, similarly like this uh, parasites hymenopteran parasites will be useful in controlling the uh, different uh, species of mealybugs in uh, any country next slide please so you know these uh, uh, parasites or predators when you import from other countries uh, exotic uh, predators or parasites they can be multiplied in the laboratory so the first mealybugs are multiplied on the pumpkin and then pump, uh, we release these uh, parasites or predators on this pumpkin and keep them in the cages multiply them and when they multiply large number of uh, you know the um, the parasitoids or the larvae of this uh, predators are available they can be released in the field for the control of the mealybugs so the mass breeding of uh, mealybugs uh, is uh, always uh, uh, important in case of in case of uh, exotic or bio control agents next slide please and uh, now very interesting uh, 
you know the information i would like to give i worked on this uh, predator this is the a fly spalgius fes uh, lepidoptera lycanidae so this uh, butterfly so butterflies you know about 99% of butterflies are phytophagous they feed on plants only 1% of uh, butterflies larva feed on are carnivorous even in that you know 1% 99% feed on ant broods so they are not economically important but one species in india this is spalgius fes this also occurs in uh, south uh, southeast asian countries this is a very important predator of mealybugs any species of mealybugs so this is the adult small butterflies about 1 inch you know wing span laying the eggs in the masses of the mealybugs and these are the larva very peculiar slug like larva you can see here this is the caterpillar the feeding on the voraciously on the mealybug species we have conducted a very detailed studies on this and uh, this is the larva here you can see feeding on the mealybugs and then they completely devour the mealybug population and then pupate the pupa is very peculiar look like a monkey face that's why it is called as a fly so this is a very important predator this can be used in the control of mealybugs worldwide next slide please so this is what i have told you in india we have you know world uh, uh, 18000 species of butterflies are there in india we have uh, 1500 species uh, out of which 99% are phytophagous less than 1% is carnivorous so only in 1% i you know 19 even in uh, this 1% 99% feed on ant brood they are not economically important but one no mealybug you know the predator this is feeds on mealybugs and scale insects this is economically very very important that is a fly next slide please so this uh, spalgis fes a fly you know the larva completely feed on the mealybugs any species of mealybugs is a potential predator of mealybugs in india and in south east asia it occurs in india burma sri lanka philippines java indonesia bangladesh and thailand so even in indonesia this uh, can be introduced and they are already there this can be mass multiplied and introduced in the control of any species of mealybugs and advantage one more advantage here this you know ants most of the ants are not able to drive away this Uh, caterpillar of this uh, a fly so this is the advantage here so this could be an effective biocontrol agents uh, you know in the mealybugs worldwide next slide please so this is the life cycle this is the female and male uh, butterfly this is the egg and uh, instar larva you can see here this is the full brown larva and then this is the pre pupa and pupa pupa is like a monkey face that's why it is called as a fly and this butterfly completes the life cycle in about 25 days um next slide in tropical region next slide please so we have conducted a detailed studies on planococcus citra as well as on uh, macanalococcus hirsutus uh, we have published all this data and here you know each larva each larva of this butterfly in its uh, developmental uh, period of about uh, 15 days can uh, consume 7500 eggs 950 nymphs and 60 adults so totally 8510 mealybug you know individuals it can devour and control that's why this is a very potential predator compared to any other uh, existing natural enemies or biocontrol agents uh, in the world so this is a very promising and a potential predator uh, you know uh, can be used for the control of mealybugs next slide please so this you know the mass rearing of uh, 
may this uh, spalgis fes a fly was a challenge because for more than 30 years mass rearing was not possible in captivity it was a challenge adults did not mate in captivity adults did not mate in the lab cage adults did not mate in the outdoor cage attempts were made to mass rear the f fly it was a thrust area at uh, indian council of agriculture institutes and uh, agricultural universities for about 30 years but uh, we could not able to mass multiply in the laboratory because the adults did not mate in captivity or even the outdoor cage or indoor cage it was a challenge next slide please so in, uh, when i was in a coffee research institute uh, you know I, i saw this butterfly and then i joined uh, bangalore university there in the field i could see this uh, a fly was a <clears throat> larva uh, you know occurring on mealybug populations on all proton plants and controlling them then i applied for ugc project to mass multiply because earlier uh, several institutes rejected my project because they told it is not possible to mass rear in the field, uh, uh, in captivity so then after this ugc project i tried you know outdoor mating cage very big cage uh, they, we could not succeed next slide please we also used outdoor cage with plants there also they did not mate next slide please so then we thought they may require a huge uh, you know the 6 uh, 6 into 10 meter cage a very huge cage there also we released uh, uh, male and females of the adults collected from the field uh, but they did not mate even in the uh, cage uh, a very huge cage and then you know we tried another method finally then next slide please we put the cage on the plant very huge polyelthea plant and then we released the uh, you know um, the males and the females a fly and then they started mating so they started the mating we could see the copulation and then we become it become a very successful uh, you know investigation or research next slide please so it is a perching butterfly that's why in uh, management of any insects we have to understand their biology and behavior so once we understand the basic biology and behavior the management of any pest will be or predators or parasites are very important so this is the perching butterfly patrolling butterflies territorial defense and leg assembly so without uh, you know the plants of uh, 9 to uh, 9 meter height uh, you know at least 9 meter height is required then they can um, uh, perching the bushes and then you know the territorial defense they form and then they attract the females and then you know so they can mate so this is how it was successful for uh, mass breeding next slide please so uh, this is the canopy we can see here uh, the dark area is canopy and this is the open place the male will uh, make a territory here all this place and uh, make a short flight uh, short flight and then attract the female using the pheromone and then you know they go for a flight and then of course i uh, need not to go for uh, detailed uh, mating behavior here we are already published uh, the publications are available and then they mate and they fertilize the female so next slide please so this is the territory of about 6 to 9 meter height is very important uh, 1 meter radius territory they fought the perch points will be there 11 to 15 points here in the canopy and then you know there will be a neutral space and then they attract the female and they go for population next slide please so this is how you know the male will make the uh, you know the territory in the canopy and then attracts the females they go for uh, flight uh, in the canopy and then they go for copulation mating you know at 6 to 9 meter height so the 6 to 9 meter height canopy 
is very important inside the cage for about 30 years all scientists from icr and agriculture universities they tried only the cage outside and inside without canopy because this is the perching and uh, butterflies and then perching patrolling and territory this is very important courtship and mating behavior is possible only if you give the canopy of uh, 6 to 9 meter height then only they can uh, uh, go for uh, flight and then for mating population next slide please you can see you know they are in copula and then the copulation duration is about uh, one hour after that uh, the female uh, will be fertilized and gravid females can deposit eggs on the infested mealybug infested pumpkins next slide please so adults mated a day after eclosion in the outdoor mating cage mating generally between 11:30 to 14 hour under bright or diffused sunlight multiple mating in case of males and a single mating in case of females more number of mating one and two days old adults than in three days old three days adults so within uh, first day they will not mate second and third day they know that they they ready for mating and then you know they mate and fertilize the females next slide please so after uh, female is fertilized this can be uh, infested uh, mealybug infested pumpkin can be kept in the small cage or a big cage with or without bush so for egg laying the canopy is not necessary uh, once uh, uh, you know the female uh, the gravid female will uh, deposit eggs and then once they deposit eggs it can be transferred to laboratory and kept in the cage and adults you know there they feed on the mealybugs and develop next slide please so you can see here after uh, the the uh, butterfly adult butterfly deposited the eggs we kept them in the uh, laboratory in the uh, you know the cages mealybug grade cages and you know they are uh, so the, the pumpkin the species so next slide you can see here the the larvae of this mealybugs uh, you know you can see here uh, sorry the predator a fly fed on the mealybugs and then completed their life cycle they pupated here and adults are uh, you know already here so these larvae once they are uh, multiplied on the pumpkin can be released in the field after mass multiplication you can see this is the mass multiplication successful mass multiplication in the laboratory next slide please so the larvae consume ex nymphs adults of mealybugs and completed their development here you can see the fourth instar larvae stopped feeding and become pre pupa here and here you can see the pupa so once uh, from this adults will emerge next slide please so a fly as a biocontrol agent mass rearing method was developed first time and uh, of course it is published uh, for the a fly for uh, understanding its basic mating behavior uh, is very important larvae of a fly can consume a large number of uh, mealybugs and you know can be utilized as a major biocontrol agent of mealybugs in india and worldwide especially your country indonesia is very suitable uh, for this uh, uh, predator a fly and it can be used as a major biocontrol agent in indonesia on any species of mealybugs so this candidate biological control agent would likely provide another effective and affordable natural enemy for the control of mealybugs worldwide next slide please so in the management of mealybugs so instead of going for toxic insecticides first you have to control the weeds remove weeds in the field because mealybugs any species of mealybugs first infest the weed and then they spread to the uh, crops so that's why the weed control is uh, very important weed can be simply you know uh, physically removed in the field 
Similarly, ant control is very important, especially the cocktailed ants and red ants. So we have to destroy the ant nests in the initial stage in the field. And then uh, banding of the stem uh, can be used so that ants can, uh, movement can be prevented. And encourage indigenous natural enemies by awarding toxic insecticides in the field. And uh, we can use uh, the, you know, the particular biocontrol agents for a particular species of mealybugs, and then you know they can be controlled. So that's why the in a mealybug management, uh, you know, uh, largely we should uh, depend on the natural enemies and also on some biological control agents like uh, parasites or uh, predators. So the most probably the toxic insecticides or systemic insecticides may not be useful. But sometimes uh, for the control of a uh, root, uh, when they are mealybugs in the root system, uh, we can use, you know, continuously the neem uh, cake. The neem cake uh, using in a long run, uh, the neem cake will be useful for controlling the uh, mealybugs in the root system because when weather is not favorable, they will be hiding in the root system and weather is even favorable they are spread to the plants, they above, uh, they come, you know, uh, from the root system, they spread to the plant and impress the plants. So that's why the mealybugs uh, are sometimes uh, very challenging and they are very serious pests on various crops. All plants are attacked by one or the other species of mealybugs and the initial stage of control is uh, very important. Uh, next slide, please. So with this, I thank you all for your uh, patience. I thank Dean University of uh, Andlos. I thank head of the department um, of, uh, uh, you know, the Department of Zoology, Entomology. I thank uh, webinar, uh, you know, the PCI, the Saraswati and uh, team members. I thank you all. So now I completed uh, my talk. Thank you, bro. What yeah. Is? Yeah. Mm -mm. Okay. Thank you very much, Professor Venka Tesha. It was really a very complete presentation about the biological control of mealybugs in India. Well, from the two lecturers, Ibu Dewi and Mr. Fenka, uh, we have got some important information about mealybugs in India and Indonesia. And then uh, Mr. Fenka has told us, has given us about uh, several natural enemies that are good candidates for biological control of mealybugs. So next, uh, we come into discussion. Um, for the participants who are interested in uh, studying, in knowing more about uh, mealybugs and its biological control, you can address your question to the two lecturers. Everybody is welcome. I think maybe there are so many interesting topics that we can discuss with Ibu Dewi and with Mr. Fenka. Well, uh, no questions. No questions. Yeah, well, yeah, no question from the audience. If no, I would like to ask question. <laughs> yes, I not 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 to waste the time, yeah. So maybe I would like to ask a uh, professor Fen Katesha. Um, yes. From from uh, several 
natural enemies you have in India, and you have done the mass rearing, uh, how much success in the field about the control of um, this mealybugs? Yeah, especially the ladybird beetle. It's mm. a mm. exotic one, and now you you can also. I don't know why Indonesia. Whether Indonesia is uh, using this uh, uh, predator, Cryptolemus montrosere. Um, maybe I'd like to know from uh, Devi, Doctor uh, Devi. Yeah, maybe Bubu Devi. If Bu Devi can share with us about biological control of mealybugs in Indonesia, Bu Devi. Hmm. Lady yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for my voice. Is hmm. uh, uh, Professor Venka Tesha and uh, others uh, audience. Uh, until now, nobody in <coughs> Indonesia already uh, make a mass rearing of cryptolimus, but we can find a lot in field so they they can uh, survive themselves and eat uh, the mealybugs and we always can found always can find the um, cryptolimus montrosieri in the field as long okay. as now we can find uh, anagirus lopezi and then <coughs> chrysopa and then chrysopa yeah, the neroptera chrysoperla yes. carnia Okay, right. here I would like I would like to add one point. Uh, millibucks, you know, depending upon the availability of the resource, they multiply and increase their population by parthenogenesis. Mm -hmm. They multiply, so the population will build up. And uh, whatever the cryptolemus matrosari available in your field may not be possible to control this increasing population, so that. If you mass multiply and uh, kept them in the laboratory, and uh, when population is increasing, you can uh, you know release this cryptolemus montrosieri additionally, so that you know the millibug population will be controlled. This is known as augmentation. So augmentation is very important. Sometimes you know this cryptolemus montrosieri yeah. is not density dependent. It is not increase its population along with the millibug population. So that if we have additional population of this crypto LMS and uh, release them in the field, then you know it will be useful to bring down the millibug population effectively. This is one method. Second method, <clears throat> since uh, Indonesia is also favorable for this uh, F fly, F fly can be it's a voracious predator, very potential predator. It can be mass bred in the Indonesia and it can be released here and there so that you know automatically their population may be increased. <clears throat> so what is your response? Well, uh, pro <clears throat> Professor Fonka, oh, ha have you done that mass rearing continuously and release to the field continuously? Yeah, yeah. We have uh, mass reared this uh, apply. And now you know we have released, mm -hmm. and they are very effective in the field. Not only that, ants also will not attack them and drive them, the larva. They are resistant to ant attack because mm -hmm. very thick skin, a large larva. So they always uh, <clears throat> uh, escape, you know, from the ant attack. So that a very potential. Even now we have tried both Cryptolemus montrosieri and uh, you know F fly larva. Of course, uh, they, you mm -hmm. know, the guild, they feed carnivorous uh, inter-guild, uh, you know, interactions. The inter-guild predatory action also we have studied. Uh, and uh, most of the time, you know, both will be effective. Uh, both uh, a fly and uh, cryptolemus larva can coexist and bring down the millibug population. That also we have studied. Uh, we have uh, publications on that. Um, for it, yeah, thank you. Yeah, 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 Pak Afandi raise hand. Pak Afandi raise hand. Pardon? Mm -hmm. Pak Afandi, yeah, yeah. 
silakan Pak Afandi, you can address okay. your question. Okay, thank you, Bu Hindrayani. I would like uh, yeah, to thank you to the committee that uh, share the link for our guest lecture today. I would like to have a question to Dr. Venka Tesha regarding with. Okay. Yeah. Yes, tell me. Because, uh, Milibak in Pasaman Barat. Yeah, it was mm. in FDG to plantation, more or less 870 hectares. Why is the, why is it is not clear? Yeah, 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 Pak Afandi. The voice is not clear, Pak Afandi. Sorry. We have Hello? internet problem. Hello? Clear already, Bu Indrayani? Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Okay, okay. okay now. Me. Very sorry, I didn't have any uh, mic here. Yes, my question will be addressed to Dr. Van Katesha. We yes, have yes. experience with the outbreak of millibug that attack mm. on F in Pasaman Barat, one district in West Sumatra. We mm. have 870 hectares of avocado that has been attacked by uh, this uh, millibug. Uh, how many, so many techniques has already applied, but uh, no more result because, uh, and recently, almost no leaf. Uh, rest in the plant right now and based on experience we have been full with natural enemies but of course there will be there will not be succeed if the attack is already very very massive would you like a share to us if you have any suggestion mm -hmm. west sumatra that happened on avocado Perhaps you have any information regarding with perhaps with uh, uh, pesticide that are really really effective as well as also how to uh, uh, to make uh, some uh, subsequent about how to spread this pesticide in our uh, avocado trees in recently almost no more no more leaf, uh, Doctor Van Katesa. Thank you. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Oh, okay. Course, uh, <clears throat> I think uh, I could not understand, you know, why this is not clear. That's why <clears throat> why I could not, uh, you know, understand the whole question and problem. I think he is uh, telling the millibugs uh, with uh, existing natural enemies is not possible. Uh, population is increasing. That's what I think he was telling. So <clears throat> in any case, you know, the millibugs, when you use the insecticides, uh, insecticides, even if they, uh, you know, establish uh, falls on the millibugs, they will not uh, establish contact because of wax coating. So yeah. any toxic insecticides so far uh, is not effective. Uh, but and uh, apart from that, the millibugs also hide, you know, in the cracks and crevices and in the nodes internodes uh, and uh, um, bark devices and also in inside the fruit and uh, not use uh, nodes everything so controlling is very difficult but in the initial stage <clears throat> once the population is built up uh, control is very difficult because uh, already uh, enough uh, damage will they will, will, will cause uh, after uh, you know population build up they cause enough damage and then if you go for control is not necessary, you know, not useful. Only thing is, <clears throat> if you control them in the initial stage, even using the water jet spray, water jet spray in the initial stage, you can wash off the populations of the uh -huh. millibugs because they are crawlers. In the first and the second stage, they will be crawling small insects. And the crawling insects can be washed off using the uh, water jet uh, spray and then you know uh, in the initial stage uh, then uh, whatever the natural enemies or predators or parasites are there they will be useful the ant also should be controlled effectively and then some uh, field observation and uh, 
field management uh, is uh, very important because uh, I don't know the condition in your country, uh, how it is uh, build up is taking place in which place and the warm weather, you know, uh, if you uh, expect warm weather in a few uh, days uh, later, uh, the mealybug uh, will build up, start building up in these uh, stages, you have to control them. But once they build up, even if you take up spray, it is not useful. They have caused enough damage. <clears throat> okay, pa, uh, Fandi. Thank you, Dr. Van Katesa. Uh, thank you, thank yeah, you for sharing so, your knowledge and experience. Yeah, so um, you can control the population when it is still very low at the beginning, I think. As an expert of IPM, Professor Van Katesa, yeah, you should be, uh, you should do regular monitoring. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. IPM, uh, <clears throat> IPM is very important. Practice, practice the IPM. <clears throat> and by regular monitoring, we know when the population yeah. start. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, okay. Since, uh, one more thing is... Uh, since orchard uh, plants and uh, is uh, very important in your country because mm -hmm. in India, you know, orchard is less and uh, we grow coffee, tea, uh, arecan at plantation crops. Orchard is very important. Millibugs are very important in your country so that uh, I am interested, you know, in collaborative studies and, uh, yeah. in future. Yeah, right. So hopefully that we can have collaboration how to overcome this kind of mealybugs. Yeah, uh, I will uh, discuss all this problem with uh, Dr. Saraswati later and mm -hmm. then uh, we will see. Yeah, uh, well, okay, uh, to Bu Dewi and Prof. Venka, there is a note from Ibu Novri Nelly, the head of plant protection department. Uh, very interesting about this mealybug. We have a lot to observe in a lot of plan. Has research this mealybug pest on cassava? Yeah, right. I have done Budewi and Mr. Uh, Fenka. I have done uh, observation on cassava about mealybugs on cassava, and in fact, Budewi. Uh, it was in 2016, yeah, eight. Mm -hmm. And we found this um, Fenacocos manihoti budewe. But three years later, we could not find it anymore in Kota Padang budewe. Uh, this is the information that we can give. Um, then Nah, Bu, no, Bu Nofri Nelly has suggestion, can we collaborate for joint research? So what is the response, Mr. Fenka? Uh, definitely, definitely we can uh, have some uh, joint research. Uh, if possible, I will visit your country uh, so that you know I can assess uh, yeah. what is uh, going on. Uh, in the field because uh, uh, laboratory research will not be most of the time is not possible. We mm -hmm. should, you know, see uh, the level of infestation uh, in the field and the field conditions you have to study. And then, you know, you can uh, think of uh, some methods. Uh, so IPM, IPM uh, plays a very important role here. Yeah. And uh, Farmers also should be educated properly about the mealybugs. Uh, most of the time, uh, farmers will neglect them in the initial stage. Um, and then, you know, they will complain when there is a heavy buildup of population and the crop is already damaged, then they complain or uh, bring it to the notice. So that's why the farmers uh, should be uh, very careful in the early initial stage management of mealybugs on the plants and mm. because they have to control them in the hot spot. So because they build up in a particular place and then spread to other plants. Mm. So these uh, uh, 
uh, are very important in the initial management so that you know it can be controlled and also we should encourage natural enemies maybe parasites or predators and whatever uh, parasites and predators are available effective parasites and predators in other countries they can be imported and uh, mass multiplied acclimatized in your country and then they can be released after some time they will acclimatize because it's a tropical country so that uh, many insects can easily uh, yeah. you know uh, develop and sustain and survive in your country mm -mm. Okay, thank you, uh, Prof. Venka. Uh, Bu Dewi, we would like to hear the response from Bu Dewi. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, Ibu It, saya boleh respon manapun, boleh ya? Yes, of course. It's about... yes, of course. Okay, Good. so uh, uh, here, if we want to make a strategy for uh, biological control, uh, so we, we we need to 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 make timing. So if we do have uh, maybe uh, lecanidid and then chrysomelid, uh, like, I mean cryptolimus and then uh, the neuropterans, three of them, and then parasitoid. So I think we have to make a, a timing. Mm. Who will release first to the uh, field? Mm. So I think we cannot augmentasi just in the same time so wow. that, that's the problem next but the the before before we release we have do to to learn how to uh, rearing it is nice yeah. uh, that uh, professor fekatensa uh, saw us how the huge cage that can uh, help the lepidopterans mate copulation is it right yeah. Fe, uh, prof not uh, a huge cage only for mating purpose. Huge cage with canopy. Suppose a uh, huge cage means uh, that is uh, nine meter only. Nine meter height. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, six meter, six meter is enough. Uh, uh, that with canopy, they, this is only for butterfly mating. Even the insect can be developed like that. Uh, there, you know, this butterfly can be mated. Once they are mated, they readily deposit eggs on the pumpkin infested, and, you know, the mealybug infested pumpkin, they can be rare. And ap apart from that, I am also now trying for uh, artificial media for this butterfly. Instead of, of rearing mealybugs on the pumpkins, uh, we can try some artificial media uh, so that, you know, they can be mass multiplied easily. Uh, otherwise, uh, pumpkins are available in your country. Uh, you can also use but uh, before that, you have to assess the uh, very potential parasites or predators uh, for uh, mass multiplication in the laboratory. Some uh, parasites and predators, even if you mass multiply and uh, release in the field, they may not be highly active or they may not be built up you know, um, um, with the pest population and control them. So that's why we have to assess the potentiality of the parasites and predators, or we should encourage them in the field by conducive environment. And then uh, we should uh, discourage the use of toxic insecticides unnecessarily because they are not able to control the insects. And then, you know, you should encourage. And then initial stage control and IPM is uh, very important. And then, you know, environmental factors also plays a very important role. So the forecasting of the pest in a particular area, in different regions of your country, and then you know giving information to the farmers uh, is also very important because it's a warm, humid uh, uh, pest, uh, mealybugs. So that's why uh, you know the, if it is there is a heavy rain or uh, uh, heavy showers, the mealybug population will be controlled automatically, and sometimes their population will not be there after two to three years. Initial stage you may find there. Uh, heavy population and then because of the activities of natural enemies as well as uh, heavy downpour, uh, heavy rains, this population will be controlled. That's why I told even in the initial stage using a simple water jet spray uh, will help to control or uh, will be uh, help to reduce the mealybug population. 
Okay. Well, thank yes. uh, uh, you very much. Yeah, Bu Dewi, you need to add some more. Yes, I would be happy because I read that Ibu Arlia Hapsari uh, mm -hmm. can uh, found, found. He, she already found uh, the Spalgis Epius that uh, Professor Fenka uh, show mm -hmm. us the picture. So mm -hmm. uh, maybe if it is in Sukabumi was there, so it could be in Wogo and it could be in Padang. So we can found in uh -huh. in the field. But since since maybe I'm not recognized that it's a love that if I collect a million bucks mm -hmm. from the field, I have not yet uh, find the, the lepidopter. Once more, uh, Dr. Fekatensa, is it mm, yes. uh, the, the, the Lepidoptera is uh, local? Uh, I mean, uh, natural? No, no, no. Nature, apa ya? Asli dari situ tuh artinya apa ya, Bu It? Is it uh, from indigenous? Mm, not, not introduced? Oh, native. Let not native. Yes, thank you. It is in uh, Southeast native. Asia. Southeast Asian countries, even in, uh, it is uh, recorded from Indonesia. I don't know. Ah, see. Uh, whether they are common, uh, very hmm. common or not. But uh, if you carefully observe, you know, maybe in uh, some uh, areas, uh, you may see the larva of this uh, butterfly because uh, adults, we cannot see. They are very shy butterflies. We cannot see them in the field. That's why in, even in India, with the great research, 30 years, uh, we are not able to mass multiply them. Uh, you are, so now, uh, you know, it is possible and it's a very shy butterfly. It is not uh, a, a seen in the field. Uh, you cannot uh, see uh, see them in the field because they will be playing in the bushes here and there. Uh, but the larva you can search. In some places, uh, that uh, huge larva, what I have showed, you know, that type, type of larva may be there in the millibug masses. But... Uh, Whenever are there, these larvae are there, they voraciously feed on the mealybugs and mealybugs will be control, completely controlled, these larvae. Uh, so very potential predator. I, and that's why I told you, you know, about uh, 8,000 uh, individuals will be controlled by single larva. Okay, thank you, Buit. Maybe uh, the explanation of uh, Prof. Venka uh, could be... Um, for new our uh, topics to find uh, these uh, lepidopteran predators to uh -huh. to be to be reared. So yeah. uh, there is a Mr. Uh, uh, Dr. Dwiki asks about would you like to show again the the cage? I think that is they need the the to to cover the uh, canopy to yeah. to collect to collect the adult of the lepidopterans and. We'll let them mating in this uh, canop cage, uh, which covers canopy, and then mm -hmm. uh, the trap using the pumpkin already infested by mealybugs. Is it yeah. right? Yes. Yes, that's right. Right. We, so, yeah. uh, for initial uh, for initial collection, you can keep the pumpkin infested me. Uh, pumpkin infested uh, with mealybug in the field. So these butterflies, you know, automatically comes and deposit the eggs on the pumpkin. So pumpkin infested, uh, uh, mealybugs infested pumpkin should be kept in the field wherever these butterflies are there. Suppose uh, you see these butterflies in the field, you keep uh, uh, pumpkin infested with mealybugs and then, you know, these butterflies are attracted to this pumpkin and deposit their eggs and then you bring them to the laboratory and keep them in the cage. This larva will uh, develop and then you will get the adults. These adults in the initial stage, you can uh, release them in the uh, huge cage. That's what a field cage. And then once they mate it, uh, they can be given, provided again with the mealybugs. And then, you know, they can be mass multiplied. This also you can try. And the cryptolemus uh, multiplication also you can try for augmentative release, augmentative release. So, uh, so that, you know, whenever the population is more, uh, whatever there in the field uh, will be augmented by using the laboratory uh, individuals so that uh, 
mealybugs can be effectively controlled with the heavy population of cryptolemus montrosari. Okay. Because cryptolemus montrosari um, uh, multiplication is very easy. If you bring the adults and release them in the pumpkin infested mealybugs in the cages in the laboratory, easily they can be mass multiplied. And then, you know, the larva and adults can be released in the field wherever uh, um, mealybug uh, population or outbreak will be, uh, you know, uh, presumed. Okay, Professor uh, Fernkatesha, thank you very much for the explanation. But uh, Mr. Dwicky would like to see again about uh, the cage, yeah. Hmm. About the cage look like. That is Both a mesh nylon. Can Nylon cage. Can you share the cage? Nylon net cage, you know, you can use. Hello? Oh, okay. Which one? Nylon, nylon. Show the cage. Cage, cage. Mm, this mm, is the mm. for any parasites. Uh, this, this, yeah. is, you know, this cage. No, this is nylon. Uh, nylon net. Net, you know, nylon net cage you can use. This is one. Slide no. number one, pro, no, number what, pro? What number no, we tried where there, you know, you could not succeed with the six meter, six meter oh, for six mating, uh, for mating, you go down. Go down. Try to show the cage one by next, one. Next, oh, next, yes. next, next, last one. Uh, here, last here, one. this one. Yeah, yeah. Here, no. Ah, this one, the this one. Cage, cage. This, one. this cage. Above the huge cage. Kandang, kandang bu. Kurungan bu, miss. Kurungan. <laughs> nah, kurungan, kurungan bu, miss. Bukan. Nomor berapa tadi? Coba lihat. Ah, ke atas lagi, miss. Ke atas. Yeah, ah, this one. Nah, this one. Yeah, this cage. See, six by six okay, into ten Pak meters. You mean, Pak Dwiki? Six meter width, six meter uh, length, uh, ten oh. meter height. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mana tu paginya? Bu Miss, ah, ni dia. Six times six and ten meter height. Yeah, yeah. With canopy, with canopy. Canopy should be there. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Ten meters. Any, any, any tree, you know, any tree or yeah. artificial canopy also should be there. You can make artificial canopy and there we can release the adults. Yeah. Oh, this okay. paper is available. The paper is available, uh, you know, it is published mass rearing method paper uh, in the Taylor and Francis biocontrol uh, agent paper. That paper is available, uh, you can uh, download from the website. Mm, okay. Yeah, uh, Mr. Dwicky, uh, is your question answered? Mr. Dwicky, um, any more? What about that one? Based on mode of action, in case of outbreak, local one must have more. What's that? 
Well, um, no more. Is there still chat? Mm -mm. Okay, I think no more question. Yeah, no more question. Uh, at least by knowing uh, Bu Dewi and Professor Fen Ka, um, we realize about the attack of millibugs and what kind of um, work that we should do next from this kind of uh, seminar. Thank you very much, Bu Dewi. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Fen Katesha. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I think we are on the track about the time. Next, yeah. I think for our thanks to Dr. Dewi Sartiami, we would like to hand the certificate of giving lecture for us the very important lecture very important knowledge for us and now we need to think about our job mm -mm. okay the certificate for uh, uh, where is it hmm? oh, okay Bu Dewi, hopefully that you receive the certificate uh, for the lecture you give to us today. Hopefully, God blesses you, Bu Dewi. Amin. Thank you, Ibu It. Come, Bu Dewi. I'm really happy to see you today after such a long time. <laughs> Okay, keep being healthy, ya Bu Dewi. Ya, yeah. insya Allah, Maybe. insya Allah, Amin. Yeah. Thank you, Bu Dewi. Maybe we can think about making collaboration for next. Ya, yeah. thank you, ya Bu Dewi. Um, then a certificate we will uh, award to Professor Fen Katesha. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for the nice, for the very good, very important lesson, knowledge that you have given to us so we can share. Hopefully that uh, we can do next collaboration. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. Receive the certificate, sir. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. What Okay. Well, uh, before we end uh, this seminar, maybe we would like to take photo. Yeah, Bu Miss, would you like to do it? Okay. Yeah. We take the picture. Well, everybody, open the camera. Mm -hmm. Open yeah. your camera, please. We take a picture for the first. Uh, screen. Mm -mm. Give a smile. Yeah. A second. But Muzir, you have nice smile. Ah, uh, that's good. You can see all the smiles. Yeah. Thank you very much. Finish book. Okay, it's done. Okay. Well, we can uh, we can end the seminar, yeah, Bu Miss. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for the participation of the seminar. Our distinguished uh, guests, uh, invited speakers, Ibu Dr. Devi Sartiami and Professor Fen Katja. We really have to thank for all the lectures and the knowledge you shared with us and hope that we can do the collaboration for next. The problems of Milibax. Thank you very much uh, to the Dean of Agriculture who have supported the program and then Ibu Nofri Nelly and Dean who have initiated this kind of webinar.
Thank you very much for all participants. Hopefully that this kind of webinar is really beneficial for everybody, especially the people who work on plant protection. Well, I, as a moderator, I'm Debrayani. I apologize for all the inconvenience during I leave this seminar. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum. Thank you. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Bu Dewi. Thank you very much, Mr. Pengkatesa, and for all thank you, thank you. participants. Hmm. Well, we go to uh, this meeting.